Alright guys, thanks for watching. Today we're going to do a little video. Got a new string, so I'm going to put some string silencers on. So here's a beaver ball. I'm going to show you how I go from this to this. All you need is a new string, well, preferably a new string, beaver balls, wax, cup pencils, and a coffee. So stay tuned. I'll show you guys how I do it. It's not necessarily the best way, but this is how I do it. Alright, just finished sealing some quivers here, so I'll put those out of the way. there all right so I got a new string from string twiddler on Facebook look at that sweet quiver hey that's our, our new our new uh, well it's not new two-tone but it's new color scheme matches just deadly with my gremlin I don't know if the I don't know if the camera is doing it justice right now but super cool the black stitch just makes it pop this is one of our it's fast becoming our our, our uh, most popular but uh, a lot of guys go with the dark brown sides, medium brown center, black stitch. Black stitch is like, it's just popping this year for some reason. But anyway, back to it. Got a new string from String Twiddler. This is an endless loop string. So an endless loop is where the string goes around on a jig, and it's just one piece of material. And it just back and forth, back and forth. And then you serve the ends and stretch it and serve the center and stuff like that. So it's not like a, like a true... Uh, traditional where it's a Flemish twist where it comes two strands well you could have 10 strand 12 strand 14 strand whatever you want for poundage and, and size and different thicknesses of string but I'm not even gonna get into that but Flemish twist comes around comes back and twists it back into itself uh, it's not a problem but what's with those ones is you really got to watch your brace height because they stretch more than than uh, continuous so anyway that noise you just heard that's what it sounds like when you don't have any string silencers on, so that's why I want to put beaver balls on. That sound is okay for you bare bow guys that are just shooting targets all day. Traditional bow hunters don't want that sound, so that's why we're here. Anyway, got a new string, going to put beaver balls on it. Just guys have been asking me about how I do mine, so I'm going to do a video. So I don't really have time to make my own string and mess around, so... Uh, Corey Taylor at String Twiddler just starting up sent me a new string so I'm going to try it endless loop shouldn't stretch like a Flemish twist meaning I shouldn't have to shoot 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 twist it shoot 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 twist it so it's already pre-stretched and we'll just see how it goes so and again and again that's fine for some not for this cowboy so like I said what you need you need a string uh, beaver balls I use pencils and wax so I'm gonna mark my spots with wax and then put pencils in there and then I'll show you guys how I twist it so we'll get uh, we'll get rocking right now I'm gonna pop the quiver off real quick alright so again wax pencils So I already waxed the snot out of, out of my, my string. It comes waxed, but I always wax the snot out of everything. I don't know if you watch any of the videos, I shove the end right in the snow when I'm, when I'm hunting. I'll, I'll put the end right into the snow and it holds my bow up. So I really wax the snot out of the string. I even spray the end of my bow with more like a lacquer just because it's in the snow, you're not going to hurt it, but in the water, you're going to start hurting stuff. When it's frozen, everything's frozen, you're not going to hurt it. People are like, oh, you're wrecking your bow. I'm not wrecking it. Bob does a bang-up job. I'm not going to wreck a bow like that. But when it's wet, I'm not shoving it into wet mud, right? But regardless, I'm going to wax the snot out of my string because moisture wrecks everything. And I'll spray the bottom end a little bit with just a lacquer every year. Because every year I'll spray my feathers with a, with a light lacquer and that waterproofs them as well. And that's another video. But... Anyway, while I'm out doing that, I'll spray the bottom of my bow tip just to prolong the life because it's everything's laminated, so you don't need to be wrecking stuff just to stick your bow in the ground. Anyway, this is how I do my my uh, whiskers here, or not whiskers, uh, silencers. So I'll measure with my fancy tool right there, about there. I'm going to mark it. I'll go about four inches or a fist, and I'll mark it again. So I got two gobs. Hard to see, but I got two gobs right there. I don't know if you can see that. 
two gobs of uh, can you see it? Of wax. Just marking. You can use a marker, whatever you want. Nothing's set in stone, but uh, this is how I do it because wax is a good thing. And what else was I going to say? Oh yeah, some guys when they're putting on their string silencers, there's a method to their madness. They measure from here to here, split it in half, and then go another half of that, and they got a quarter of this and whatever. I don't do that. Guys are going to probably be commenting on the video. You should do this. It's best. I don't care. It's not that big of a deal to me. The bow's pretty quiet when you shoot. You're shooting a heavy arrow regardless. My method to my madness is if I put something closer to my string, I'm actually taking energy away from my arrow. So the further out the, in my head, the faster your arrow is going to go. It's not going to go any faster. Sorry, not faster. It's just not going to slow it down as much. The closer you get to the string, you might as well put that extra weight on your arrow, if you know what I'm saying, because it's going to slow it down. So you put more crap here, it's going to slow it down. It's just it's, it's science. You can't argue with science. Anyway, I'm going to mark this side with my fancy ruler here and uh, get set up. There, there. Now I got the top marked, the bottom marked. I know my buddy Tommy, this carpenter, is going to give me crap. That's about, what, 8 inches? <laughs> so what I do, new string, I get, I, I'll tie my knock point on, I'll square my bow. You know, squaring is uh, just a starting point, right? If you're tuning your bow, you need a starting point. You're going to go back to zero, blah, blah, blah. But I'll wax it, I'll get my brace height, that's important. I'll shoot it, I don't know, 10, 20 times just to kind of settle the string. Even though it's a, a continuous loop, I don't care, I'm just going to shoot it. Get it kind of shooting where you want, get your brace height where you want. Uh, actually, I didn't even measure this one. Probably should. Tape measure. There's a the tape measure. And uh, I think Bob said around 8 inches. So right now I got 8 and a quarter. So my brace height is big right now a little bit but it, it was flying straight so it doesn't matter what it is uh, with this gremlin it likes to be shot around that eight inch mark uh, depending on your arrow and all that fun stuff so right now this is where I want it to be so when you shoot your bow lots your string stretches your brace height shrinks so how to fix that is you would twist your string make it shorter your brace height will get bigger because it bends the limbs back if you didn't understand that, rewind it, play it again. You twist your string to shorten the string to increase your brace height. Because after you shoot a thousand shots, your brace height is going to shrink. And you should really, really, really write this measurement down if you're you know, bad memory. And this should be always the same. So what I do is I'll have my arrow and I got stripes on my arrow. Uh, and I just reference to where the stripes are on my riser. So that's about it. But that's the most important part, traditional guys, whatever. If you guys are setting this up for your first time, everybody else, ignore what I just said. So anyway, in a, I'm going to unstring my bow, put the pencils where my wax is, then I'll show you guys how I do it. You want to keep tension on it so that it stays right. All right, I got my string. Okay, hopefully you can see that I've got the pencil pencils through the string like that. And that's basically on the wax that I put on, marking where I wanted to put the pencils, obviously, just like that. So now that's my starting point. <clears throat> well, it's not starting, but that's about where it is. So I'm going to put it in, wrap it. I'm going to wrap it the same way that my string is twisting. You know, right hand string for right hand shooters, left hand twist for left hand shooters. Just kidding. <clears throat> okay, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this other camera. I'll probably just do it over here. But uh, anyway, this year we, we uh, well, last week I went, did a little ice fishing with my buddy Murray there. He shot a big mule deer this fall. Did a little ice fishing, eight inches of ice, walked out, caught a bunch of fish, flew the drone around a little bit. My buddy Rudy came out and slayed some tulipy, and we we did pretty good. We 
for, you know, first ice, super fun. I don't know if I'm going to do more ice fishing videos or not. Uh, if you want me to, throw a comment or two, but ice fishing videos are kind of boring to me, but they're, you, they're still fun to watch. Butter, but, uh, crank them to the sky. <laughs> walleye mainly or? All walleye. Yeah. Yeah. Then the following day on the weekend there, I uh, went and pulled my trail cameras. Just I, I just wanted to see what what deer were still alive after the gut season and the draw seasons around around town here where I hunt. Uh, it's all mule deer walking in the snow, frosty everywhere. It's super fun just to get out, right? some deer up here. Let's see if there's any coyotes skirting them because all the deer tracks I see have uh, coyote tracks with them. That's all. Stumbled on the Get mule deer, nice box, uh, right where Murray shot his, that's right where they were. Uh, watched them for a bit, and then I started, once they kind of petered off, I started calling a little bit, and uh, there was another 10 or 15 muley way back in the pasture, and they come out skyline. It was, it was super cool to see. You know, it's nice seeing a bunch of deer, having not seen a bunch of deer during the season, so. Anyway, did a little walk around. Tried to fly the drone, the drone went up in the air, spit out one of the propellers and come crashing down, you know. It was super nice, so I wanted to get some video of the of the frost and super thick frost. Super nice, super good day. Uh, ended up calling for a bit, got set up and called. Didn't see any, any coyotes that day, so I'm not really going to do a video on that, just going to throw in some, some stuff here. So other than that, got a new string from string twiddler here and uh, yeah just uh, a lot of guys were asking me about how I do my uh, beaver balls so I'm actually gonna do a video now so here we are gonna set this camera up and we'll go from there and uh, bear with me guys if I'm all over the map here like I said one of the most important things is having a coffee with you. And I apologize if the audio is like I'm screaming in your ear here, so, because uh, obviously I am. So this, this, this will be our top one. And so this string is twisting, what, what is that, anti-clockwise or clockwise if you go this way or whatever. Anyway, it's going this way. So I'm gonna start for me, I always, for some reason, I like to start at the top and work down. So that's what I'm going to do. So what you do is you take, you find out which direction your fur is going the best. And I will take, you know, a quarter inch of the fur, right? So I can stick that through and I really pay attention to which way it's going. It's coming over top, coming over top. So I'm going to put this guy in this way at the top. And I apologize if I don't get it on camera. 
too too great. That's the beauty of that uh, pencil is you can slide it. So here's my wax, so I don't really care about the wax anymore. You can see it's super fun. This is really, really fun to do. Really fun. I love it. But personally, I like beaver balls. They just look super cool. You're, you're more of a man if you've got beaver balls. So anyway, I'm going to pull this much because this is going to be exposed the whole time. So you don't tie the end off or anything like that. Then you pull your pull your... Uh, pencil out, and that part stays exposed the entire time until it pulls pulls out. So you don't want to pull too hard. So what I do, go in there. I'm going to wrap it. So you wrap it around, and I want to be able to see when I'm wrapping. So I'm going to pull the hair back. I'm going to keep pulling that hair back because you don't want to wrap over top of hair because then everything's laying down. So you come in. Pull this hair back so you can see. Hopefully, you guys can see that. Pull it back so you can see that. Keep pulling it back, and you want to get hide, hide, touching hide like that. Right? So anywhere there's hair, you keep it out of there. And you want to have the hide, the beaver hide, touching beaver hide as it comes around. Right? Like I said, it's super fun. You want to be enough of an angle so you're not overlapping. Right? So you can see hide. Come on. Hide. Touching hide. And you gotta keep. See how it catches? And then you just keep moving that hide out of the way so that you can see hide touching hide right you want you don't want to wrap any hair in there to defeat the purpose and actually if these ever come loose on you you can actually feel it vibrating because this will be like around your strength do, 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 like that you can actually feel it the trained professional can feel it so keep it tight, wrap it around, keep the hair out of it, and then I hope this is all on camera because, like I said before, well maybe I didn't say it, but I'm going to only do the one side. You guys can get the idea. I'm not going to do both sides on camera, waste your time. So but keep, keep that hair out of the way. I mean, you're going to lap some hair at the end of the world but you don't want to you don't want to right hide against hide and try not to overlap the hide oh man I hope that's all on camera sorry guys a little tedious but it is what it is right then when you get near the end we'll do one more wrap because you want to have about the same sticking out now, if I was to let this end go, the whole thing's going to come unwound. So, you, you really have to pay attention and hold. My right hand is squeezing hard on all of it. Because if I do let it go, she's just going to spring on, on, undo. So, now I can slide my pencil. That's why I like using a pencil, nothing metal. I know guys that have used butter knives. But I won't name any names. So, anyway. We'll, uh do another half wrap and we'll try to come through that. It, it's not fun, but it's not hard. Like you do, do this a couple times, you get the hang of it. it. But in my opinion, it's worth it. Like it's, it's good. I like it, right? Just show it through. The last thing you want to do is pull out that pencil. surgical precision here and I hope you guys can see that right. so you get enough through your string 
so that when this when you let the string go, oops, it's gonna actually hold it. So it'll twist it. your beaver ball. Just like that, get a little how she going. And there it is. Just like that. Simple, easy, done. Alright, so that's it. Nice fuzz ball. So that's the top one. I'll do the bottom one the exact same, but that's that's what it looks like right there. Can you see that? Do it all professionals do. Put your hand behind it so it focuses. Cool. But yeah, that's how I do it. You guys can do it however you want, but uh, already you can hear that difference. Like, how pretty does that look? Slap on your quiver. Oh, I'll tell you another thing. Right? How cool does that look? Matches my nice green new quiver. Whoops. Uh, I'll tell you another thing real quick. I've been working on different strap systems. Like, I have a Velcro right here. But the odd time, I had batches of Velcro break. Like, crappy Velcro come and whatever. So I've been playing with these brackets, these straps, not brackets. Uh, these are for skis, actually. You put two skis together, two, whatever, cross country, downhill, whatever, and you can crank it tight, right, like that, whatever, whatever. Got these ones from Cabela's. These ones I get, I bought from Clutch, Clutch. They're plastic, they're stretchy, you know, and they just go, you can put them around your limb, put them through your, your giddy up, and it's uh, it's nice and tight, it's clean. These are expensive. I don't want to include these. I haven't reached out to the company yet about uh, getting a discount so I can include these in, uh, in the quivers, but uh, these really work, except for when it's really, really cold out they're super hard to stretch. That's the only problem. So if you're taking your bow apart, or your bow, if you're taking your, well, if you're taking your bow apart and you're taking a quiver off, these are uh, really nice because it's not loud like Velcro. But I haven't had a problem with the Velcro myself. Uh, like I said, the old older Velcro that I had before, uh, sometimes you crank on a too tight bus. But I've, I've been very fortunate with this, little, with the, the, Velcro I've been getting now, so I'm um, including one extra strap just in case you cut one or break one or whatever. There's an extra strap coming from now on. When you order a quiver and you order a matching tab, I'm actually sending you two tabs. You get one extra from now on, so that's kind of new this year. You get a tab, whatever, you get a two piece tab, whatever, two piece tab, two piece. It's two pieces like this, but this one's the backside's easily removable. You can you can yard the back off if you don't want the backside, right? And you just want the the one piece of leather. This piece comes off real quick, and you're actually getting another free uh, another free tab with just the no no logo or nothing like that. It's just throwing your pack in case you lose your your more expensive one that you spend more time on stitching and lacing and dyeing and stuff like that so I mean we're I got a punch we're punching these out so why not why not get two right guys so I appreciate the purchases so I'm giving you guys it's it's fast to punch out the tabs so why not right so appreciate it again thanks for watching guys I appreciate all the orders thank you so much for your patience uh, I'm gonna finish this up do some indoor 3ds have some fun. This is a little bit lighter bow, so that I'm going to shoot this one for indoors. I'm going to try to shoot and hold and aim and not aim. Sorry, try to hold, focus, and shoot. I'm I'm not aiming. I can't. 
I can't anchor high enough to my eye with the glasses, so I'm not going to string walk or get too crazy. I'm just going to shoot how I shoot. Works for me. So, again, thanks for watching, guys. If you want a quiver, uh, gunsharacter.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. All right, there's your difference. Thanks for watching, guys.